this is just, it's just different. There's nowhere else that's like this. There are multiple air stations in the southeast. There's one air station in Kodiak, Alaska. The place is it's a challenge. It'll, it'll eat you for lunch. It's a small island, right? But our AOR runs from Yakutat up all the way over and all of that. So we basically, we cover all of this area. Definitely a dynamic environment. Icing, turbulence, daylight all the time or nighttime all the time. You've got major temperature changes. You've got large mountains that you have to cross and fuel locations are few and far between. We're primarily here because of the strategic location of Kodiak in relation to the Aleutian Island chain. The Coast Guard has our statutory mission. So up here we have a large commercial fishing fleet, rather large recreational boating fleet as well. So a lot of the missions tend to center around search and rescue, pollution response, living marine resources along those lines. We support quite a range of missions. You get a lot of operational experience everywhere, but I, I don't think there's anywhere else that's quite like this. The distances that you're operating, the weather that you're operating in to remote airfields, the weather forecasts here are notoriously inaccurate just because it's, it's a very harsh environment. It's a very fluid situation every single day. Everyday challenge in Alaska is we are very fuel limited. We're always just struggling to make it to the next fuel cache. It takes a lot more planning, a lot more precision. So anywhere we go is usually a stretch for fuel, so we have what's called a bingo which is this number right here, and that kind of tells us how much fuel we have to get to the next point. And if you start seeing negative bingo, that means you, you don't have, have enough gas to get there. A lot of the places we take off from that we're heading to, we just, we're just seeing negative numbers. Landing on the back of a cutter at night in the Bering Sea gets extremely challenging, especially, you know, when you're faced with low viz and 40 to 50 knot winds and 10 foot seas and it goes from something that is just completely amazing to something that just scares the shit out of you, quite frankly. You know, whenever I get a call from home and a pager would go off, my daughters wake up. So we just tell them someone needs mommy's help and mommy's gonna go fly the helicopter and I may be home tonight, I may not be home tonight and I let them know I love them and go do my thing. The weather environments and patterns, it is very different from the lower 48. The sun in the winter doesn't really crest out overhead, it kind of just drapes across the horizon. Even though the temperature is above freezing, the sun doesn't help to melt the ice, so you'll go days if not weeks with significant amount of ice on the roads, sidewalks. We call it wintering over. You come in, you check in, if you're an aircraft commander, you have to winter over and experience the winter in Alaska and all the remote areas that we operate and then you can get signed off and then sign for the aircraft as an Alaska qualified aircraft commander. Our way we feel planes here is different than how they do it in Elizabeth City. The rules about pushing planes out here, it's going to be different than again like in Florida. Also because it gets cold, it freezes and ice out on the ramp, that's another thing to worry about. There's dangers of pushing a 120,000, 130,000 pound airplane out on a wet, icy ramp. And just uh, there's different dangers that we have to worry about and just the weather, the wind we can get out here. I love Alaska. I mean, some of the challenges we're faced up here are just, just incredible. The experience you get as an aviator is experiences you're not gonna be faced with with anywhere else. We're fortunate because we, at the end of the day here, you can go home knowing that you made a difference. I think it's, a, it's an awesome opportunity and responsibility to be able to, to get to do what we do.